everyone. This presentation will be on basic drug dosages in pediatrics. Now this is one of those videos which I never really planned on doing but I am doing it based on a popular request from many of you. Now pediatrics as we all know is one of those subjects where we don't blindly give drugs as available in the form of one tablet or one capsule but many times we do need to calculate based on either the age and or weight of the child whom we are examining. Now in this presentation I will go over the basic drug dosages and along with the drug dosages the formulations in which they are widely available here in India. And before going into the drugs as such, uh, one disclaimer which I would like to put out is I am discussing all these drugs based on their generic name and not by the trade name or the brand name. And various areas do have different availabilities which are sometimes not as common as those what we commonly see. But I am only focusing upon the commonly available variants because that is what is widely available. Now uh, with that I think the first drug which we should discuss is paracetamol. Uh, paracetamol is undoubtedly known to all of us as a drug of choice given in case of fever. We can give paracetamol either through an oral route, an intravenous route or a rectal route. The oral dosage is 15 mg per kg per dose. The IV dosage is 10 mg per kg per dose and the rectal dosage is 20 mg per kg per dose. And I would like to emphasize here that at this dose of 15 mg per kg per dose, a maximum of 4 dosages can be given per day ideally, which implies that it should be given every 6th hourly. A general convention is that the IV dosage is given 8th hourly. So that is one point which I would like to stress upon. Now coming to the availability of paracetamol, it is available as drops, it is available as a syrup, it is available as tablets, it is also available as IV infusions and IV vial as well as suppository for rectal usage. Now drops is commonly given in the neonatal du duration and for children who are generally still breastfeeding we prefer drops. A slightly bigger child and a toddler we can go ahead for syrup. A slightly elder child maybe 7-8 years who has started to take tablets we can give tablets. An IV is strictly kept only for those who are inpatient and often for those children who need to be kept NPO. Now the role of suppository comes in a child who is having a very high fever as an acute way to bring it down. But the one drawback is because of the erratic absorption it might help in short term but is definitely not a long term way of correcting the fever. Number one. Now we will consider a case scenario which I think is the most ideal way to uh, go about the drug dosage. Now we will consider a newborn who is 3 kgs. So the paracetamol requirement for a 3 kg newborn is 15 into 3 that is 45 milligram per dose. So keeping in mind this requirement of 45 milligram which I will write in this corner here. With a requirement of 45 milligram for a newborn drops is ideal formulation which is required. So with drops we need to go for 0.45 ml. Now we arrived at this because 100 milligram is there in 1 ml. So we want to know how many ml contains 45. If you cross multiply you will arrive at 0.45 ml. Now similarly we will consider a case of a 6 kg child now. A 6 kg child requires 6 into 15 that is 90 milligrams of paracetamol per dose. So now that we have arrived at that number of 90, we will first consider the syrup of 120 milligram per 5 ml. So we know that 120 milligram is present in 5 ml. So 90 will be present in how much? If you again, if we sit and do the math, it will come to 450 by 120 and it roughly comes to almost 3.75 ml, almost 4 ml is required. Similarly, if we consider a 10 kg child and we consider this formulation of 250 milligram per 5 ml, a 10 kg child will require 150 milligram of paracetamol. So we know that the requirement is now 150. So uh, 
this is the similar fashion we said 250 milligram is present in 5 ml so 150 will be there in x if we cross multiply it will come to 3 ml of paracetamol requirement similarly so on and so forth we can calculate for tablets and uh, it is also advisable the tablets either to be given as a half tablet or a whole tablet uh, breaking it into three fourth tablets sometimes is difficult and is inaccurate and similar manner of calculation for IV as well as suppositories also the reason I'm stressing so much upon paracetamol is paracetamol is the most common drug what we prescribe in pediatrics and a paracetamol overdosage is lethal beyond the uh, lethal dosage and at the same time paracetamol under dosage will be ineffective and the child will be in discomfort that becomes more problematic especially in a case of febrile seizures where we need to control the fever as well in addition to the routine management of seizures now moving on to cetirizin uh, cetirizin dosage we give it based on the age of the child rather than based on the weight between 6 months to 2 years we give 2.5 mg once a day between 2 to 6 years we can give 2.5 mg twice a day and more than 6 years depending on the age of the child we can go for either 5 to 10 mg as a single dosage or twice daily and as far as availability is concerned cetirizine is available as a 5 mg per 5 ml syrup as well as 5 mg and 10 mg tablets another antihistamine what we commonly give is chlorpheniramine this we give can give either based on the weight or based on the age of the child Generally, chlorpheniramine is available as combinations and this is one point which I would like to highlight. I am not going into any of the brands here, but if it is available as a combination, generally we calculate based on the presence of CPM, that is chlorpheniramine itself. If you go by the weight, we give 0.35 mg per kg per day. And if you go by age, 1 to 6 years, we give 1 mg, 6 to 12 years, 2 mg, and more than 12 years, 4 mg per day. All of these are per day. Moving on to ondansetrin, the dosage of ondansetrin is 0.15 mg per kg per dose. I am stressing upon this, it is per dose and it is available as an intravenous formulation, as a syrup as well as as tablets. Now, some companies also do give the chewable strip where you just keep it under the tongue as a sublingual route, but it is not available in all setups. The Strengths available for ondansetrin include a syrup of 2 mg per 5 ml, tablet of 4 mg as well as 8 mg, though the 4 mg tablet, tablet is one which is more common, and an IV strength of 2 mg per ml. Now, if we consider a 10 kg child, a 10 kg child requires 1.5 mg of ondansetrin per dose. So, we now remember this value of 1.5 mg. So, this 1.5 I will just note separately. We know that the syrup contains 2 mg in 5 ml. So, 1.5 mg will be present in how much? If you do the math, it will come to 3.5 ml. So, we arrive at this based on a cross multiplication. I am stressing on this again and again because it is okay to take a pen and paper and calculate, but it is always important to ensure that we get the calculation right. Uh, moving on now to the deworming agents, the first one which I will touch upon is albendazole. Albendazole is generally preferred to be given periodically at least once in 6 months to children to ensure the deworming is achieved and a fun fact is that National Deworming Day is given on the first Sunday of February. So that is uh, just for additional knowledge. But coming back to the topic as such, between 1 to 2 years we give 200 mg of albendazole and more than 2 years it is given as 400 mg. The dosage is always repeated after a gap of 3 weeks and it is important to give albendazole to all the children who are available in the household on the same day. It is available as tablets of 200 mg and 400 mg strength as well as a 200 mg per 5 ml syrup. Now, a uh, sister drug uh, to a larger degree is mebendazole. The specific dosages of mebendazole is given in certain conditions. I will just enumerate them. 100 mg is given twice a day for 3 days for ascaris proven or for whipworm infestation or hookworm infestation. A 100 mg single dose is to be repeated after 2 weeks for pinworm. 
and a specific indication of hydrated cyst is where we give as per the weight of the child to 30 mg per kg per day divided every 8 hourly for 4 weeks. Now ivermectin is given only in combination with albendazole under special circumstances and the dosage of it is 0.2 mg per kg per dose. Ivermectin is not available alone, it is always and always given in combination with albendazole. So please keep that in mind. Now moving on, the dosage of zinc is easily classified into less than 6 months and more than 6 months. Less than 6 months it is given as 10 mg per day and more than 6 months as 20 mg per day. The various strengths which are available are as drops as well as of syrup. The syrup contains 20 mg per 5 ml and drops sometimes are available as plain zinc and in such situation it is 10 mg per ml. It is also sometimes available as a combination along with other multivitamins but it's always remember when we calculate for zinc in cases of diarrhea and now under the current scenario of COVID prophylaxis and COVID treatment, symptomatic treatment, it's always remember to be remembered that we should calculate in terms of milligram per day of zinc in addition to the other components which are available. Now moving on to another important trace element iron. The dosage of iron differs whether we are giving a prophylactic treatment or a treatment for a proven anemia. The prophylactic dose is 1 to 2 mg per kg per day and the treatment dose is 3 to 6 mg per kg per day. It is almost 3 times as much. It is always and always important not to give iron on an empty stomach and never to give it in combination with tea or other citric uh, material because it interferes with the absorption. Iron is available as drops of 25 mg per ml or syrup of 80 mg per 5 ml or in a tablet formulation of 325 mg. Again, I am giving the general availability of the iron formulations and I am not going into what each specific brand does give because brand wise there are subtle variations which do occur. Now another drug hydroxyzin, uh, many of us know it better by the trade name of Atrax. Though I did say I will not go about trade name, the only reason I am mentioning it specifically for this drug is many people I have seen blink when we say hydroxyzin, but the minute we say Atrax, they recollect, okay, this is what we are talking about. I will refrain from using these uh, <laughs> trade names in uh, further slides, but this is one drug which I am specifically mentioning it because many people are just not aware that hydroxyzin and Atrax are synonymous. The dosage of hydroxyzin is 2 mg per kg per day and specifically it is contraindicated in less than 6 months or in children proven with an acute porphyria or known to have any ECG changes. The availability is as 10 mg tablets and 25 mg tablets or in syrup formulations of 10 mg per 5 ml, drops of 6 mg per ml and injection of 25 mg per ml. Now commonly what we generally give is either as a tablet or the syrup form, so please just keep that in mind. Further, uh, if you come to vitamin D3, we generally give this as newborn prophylaxis to prevent vitamin D. Various pediatric bodies like the European Society of Pediatrics, American Academy of Pediatrics, Indian Academy of Pediatrics all give different consensus statements and different guidelines for amount of vitamin D3 to be given for a newborn and how much to be continued up to infancy. Each protocol varies but in a simple term, to recollect, it is widely available as 400 international units per ml as well as D3 Fort is available as 100 international units per ml uh, drops. For simplicity sake, we will just consider the 400 international units per ml as a standard formulation. The dosage is 1 ml per day, that is 400 international units per day to be given for 1 year for term infants and 800 international units per day for 1 year for preterm infants. This is the most simplified consensus statement which more or less considers a bits and pieces of all the guidelines across the world which is widely accepted and practiced by most pediatricians and at the same time the logic in giving the supplementation is treating vitamin D3 prophylaxis is cheaper than assessing for vitamin D3 deficiency. So it is one of those cases where it is better to give prophylaxis rather than wait for the deficiency and wait for the manifestations and complications to occur. Now. Uh, with that, we will move into the antibiotics uh, segment. I will be stressing upon the common antibiotics what we use generally. I am not touching upon any of the antifungals or antivirals. 
the antibiotics of course we know that each antibiotic has its own spectrum of action i'm not going to go into detail in that and antibiotics itself have so many brands so many combinations there are a few rational combinations which i'll be touching upon but the first antibiotic is amoxicillin and a simple dosage of this to remember is 20 to 50 mg per kg per day i'm sorry for the typo in the slide it is 20 to 50 mg per kg per day and it is available as 100 mg per ml drops 125 mg per 5 ml syrup 125 mg tablets 250 mg tablets 250 mg capsules and 500 mg capsules now the choice of antibiotic is to always be given based on the clinical picture and the choice of the route is as required by the child it is always better to give amoxicillin as a bd dosage that is twice a day and is always advisable to give along with the cover of a probiotic uh similar formulations are available for a rational combination of amoxiclav that is amoxicillin plus clavulanic acid a similar dosage of 20 to 50 mg per kg per day is given and though it is a combination we calculate based on the amoxicillin component always the exception to this dosage rule is in acute otitis media where we give 80 mg per kg per day now if you come to the availability it is available as tablets of 375 mg which contain 300 mg of amoxicillin and 75 mg of clavulanic acid 625 mg tablets which contain 500 amoxicillin and 125 mg of clavulanic acid syrup of 156 mg per 5 ml which i have not seen till date in uh, the area where i practice 228 mg per 5 ml which is commonly used and 457 mg per 5 ml again which is commonly used drops contain 91.4 mg per ml which contains 80 mg of amoxicillin and 11.4 mg of clavulanic acid along with injectable forms of 150 mg 300 mg 600 mg and 1.2 g now uh, for simplicity sake we will just consider a child who is 10 kg okay i am considering the 10 kg child in most examples because it is easy for understanding the calculations now if we want to prescribe amoxiclav for a general uh, a fever of more than 5 days with a focus in the respiratory tract so that is one of the indications of this if i want to start at 50 mg per kg per day the requirement per day will come to almost 500 mg per day now the 500 mg requirement per day is to be divided into two dosages like i mentioned so it will be 250 in the morning 250 at night now remember what i said i am calculating based on the amoxicillin dosage so the closest way i can get this 250 is by taking a 5 ml of 228 per 5 ml syrup or 2.5 ml of this 457 per 5 ml syrup either way you take it you achieve the same target now the dilemma comes up which should you prefer ideally you can take anything because it doesn't really make a difference but depending on the age of the child in certain scenarios it is better to give a larger volume where we try to make up the full 5 ml in maybe a child who is 3 to 5 years old conversely in a younger child maybe of 1 to 2 years we want to give minimum quantity with more concentration so in such a child you would prefer to give the higher strength but lesser volume so this is just a crude example what i am giving and a general trend if you would have noticed the strength per ml of the drops is always more than the strength per ml in the syrup which again comes back to that point of the younger the child we try to give lesser volume without compromising on the drug dosage now uh, another drug which we commonly all of us prescribe is cefixim with a dosage of 8 mg per kg per day but a special circumstance of only enteric fever is where we give 20 mg per kg per day the availability of this is 50 mg per 5 ml syrup 100 mg per 5 ml syrup or 200 mg tablet now azithromycin is one of those drugs which we are all hearing about a lot in view of the covid pandemic the dosage of azithromycin is 100 mg per kg per day given as a single dosage the previous slide i didn't mention cefixim also is given twice a day but azithromycin is always given as a single dosage the exception for this dosage is again in multi drug resistant typhoid where we give 20 mg per kg per day 
and the availability of azithromycin is as 100 mg per 5 ml syrup, 200 mg per 5 ml syrup and 500 mg tablets. Now, ceftriaxone is a common first line empirical choice of broad spectrum antibiotic given for inpatients. The general dosage is taken as 50 to 75 mg per kg per day and it is always given as two doses. The initial stat dose is always given as a loading dose equal to a one day dosage and it is available as 500 mg or 1 gram injection. The exception again to the dosage here is not typhoid but rather it is meningitis. So, in meningitis it is always given at 100 mg per kg per day and we will just take again an example of a 10 kg child. For a 10 kg child we will consider the higher end dosage itself of 75 mg per kg per day. So, the requirement is 750. The loading dose is to be given if right now 750 mg a complete dosage followed by 375 milligram the next morning if you are giving the first dose at night, the next dose in the morning 375, no dose in the afternoon, the night dose will become 375 again. The reason for giving this initial stat dose is to ensure that the plasma concentration is achieved so that the bacteria is static and bactericidal action is maintained. Now, cefotaxin versus ceftriaxone is one of those debates which always depends on the consultant which always depends on the age of the child because cefotaxim is always preferred in newborn and ceftriaxone is always avoided in newborn unless the only newborn indication of ceftriaxone is ophthalmia neonatorum in severe manifestation. But otherwise we avoid ceftriaxone in the neonatal time because it causes biliary sludging. Cefotaxim in many centers is given as a first line antibiotic choice in the NICU. Cefotaxin is always given as a TID dosage once in eight, 8 hours. No baseline tests are required to give it and the dosage is always 100 to 150 milligram per kg per day. It is only available in an IV formulation. Please keep that in mind. Both cefotaxim and ceftriaxone both are available only as an IV formulation in dosages of 250 milligram and 500 milligram or 1 gram vials. Now, centers which do not have cefotaxim as the first line choice prefer ampicillin that again depends on the center as well as the consultant. We are not going to go into any of that, but the dosage is 100 to 200 milligram per kg per day and the availability is as capsules of 250 or 500 mg, tablets of 125 or 250 mg, syrup of 125 milligram per 5 ml, drops of 100 milligram per ml or injection of 250 milligram or 500 milligram. Like I mentioned, it is a first line choice in some centers. Now, moving to the penicillins, the incidence of rheumatic fevers and rheumatic heart disease has dramatically come down over the past few years. But penicillin G benzathione remains the drug of choice for secondary prophylaxis of rheumatic fever. Less than 6 years of age, it is always given as 6 lakh units per 3 weeks and dosage repeated every 3 weeks and 12 lakh units every 3 weeks if more than 6 years of age. If you consider the recent guidelines, they do say less than 27 kgs to give uh, 6 lakh units and more than 27 kgs to give 12 lakh units. Again, it depends on which centers you work in and which guidelines you follow. If you consider the oral form of penicillin into penicillin V, the dosage up for infants is 62.5 to 125 milligram per dose or children less than 5 years, 125 milligram per dose or children between 6 to 12 years of age 250 milligram per dose. If you consider the equivalence 250 milligrams equals 4 lakh international units. Now, uh, for completion sake, we will just touch upon cefepirazone, which is another cephalosporin. The dosage is 100 to 150 milligram per kg per day and is given as a TID dosage. Now, amikacin, we know that it has a gram negative coverage and the dosage of this is given as 15 milligram per kg per day and amikacin is one of those antibiotics which is given as a single dosage alone. Now, gentamicin is another aminoglycoside assisted drug of amikacin. The dosage of it is 5 to 7.5 milligram per kg per day and is given as a single dosage as well. Ciprofloxacin, uh, though we are no longer using it as a first line choice of enteric, recent literature does suggest that Ciprofloxx is to be considered as a drug of choice for MDR typhoid. So, it was abused for typhoid 
it became resistant and now we are going back to using ciproflux for typhoid the dosage remains 20 to 40 mg per kg per day in the oral form or 10 to 20 mg per kg per day in the iv form nofloxacin has a dosage of 10 to 15 mg per kg per day and doxycycline is a drug of choice for the rickett seal fevers and is also the drug of choice for certain endemic diseases like scrub typhus now doxy can be considered as one of those wonder drugs which can be given for a fever of unknown origin which 9 out of 10 times will reduce the fever by a uh, different mechanism and the dosage of doxy is always 2 to 5 mg per kg per day but we as a thumb rule we generally avoid giving it in children less than 8 years because of the staining habits of the teeth if you read the line in nelson which is given under the rickettsial chapter it says to go ahead and treat the children with doxycycline for rickettsial fevers and later take them to a dentist for the whitening therapy this is a famous line which is always quoted by many senior faculty and it's an important point for uh, pg rounds discussion but it's available as tablets of 100 mg and 200 mg tablets and 25 mg per 5 ml and 50 mg per 5 ml syrup now moving to the higher antibiotics which is given for resistant organisms like linezolid linezolid is given as a dosage of 20 mg per kg per day and is generally considered as a drug of choice for methicillin resistant staph aureus for mrsa it is available as 600 mg tablets 100 mg per 5 ml syrup and injectable forms of 200 ml 200 mg per 100 ml and 600 mg per 300 ml now one advantage of linezolid over vancomycin which you will understand in the subsequent slide is that it is available both as an injectable as well as an oral form so if you want to step down in giving the full dosage if you want to give the complete 14 day dosage and say by day 10 the child is completely better and they are really insisting upon discharge and there is the good chance of compliance the remaining 4 days you can go ahead and confidently discharge them with the same drug at the same dose on an oral formulation but if you consider vancomycin it is to be given as 40 mg per kg per day over uh, every 6th hourly that is 4 doses per day and 60 mg per kg per day for a proven cns infection and it is available only as a dosage of 500 mg and 1 g per vial now if you understand a simple difference here this has to be given for a complete in iv course of antibiotics so if you consider either the 14 day or the 21 day regimen it is difficult to keep a child in a inpatient setting for 14 or 21 days also under the especially under the current scenario merely for the sake of antibiotics which is where linezolid comes into picture as a better choice but i'm stressing on this only and only where compliance is assured to be good this is another rational combination which is widely used uh, piperacillin plus tazobactam as a combo it is given as 300 to 400 mg per kg per day divided either 6th hourly or 8th hourly and is always calculated for piperacillin and tiptas is a drug of choice for all pseudomonas infections it is available as generally a combination of 4 g of piperacillin and 500 mg of tazobactam where it's widely marketed as tiptas 4.5 g now the last set of drugs which i'll be covering is the anti epileptics in which the rescue drug and the drug of choice for status epilepticus the first line in the management of status epilepticus midazolam is 0.15 mg per kg per dose i'm not going into any detail of the formulations here but just keep in mind that 0.15 mg per kg per dose is the drug of choice for midazolam clobazam is the drug of choice for intermittent prophylaxis of febrile seizures the dosage of it is 0.3 to 1 mg per kg per day always and always given as 1 mg per kg per day unless proven otherwise and is available as 5 mg and 10 mg tablets now phenytoin i'm not going again into too much detail over phenytoin in the availability but i'm just going to touch upon the loading and maintenance dose the loading dose is 15 to 20 mg per kg and maintenance dose is 5 to 8 mg per kg per day given every 12th hourly uh as far as valproate is concerned the dosage is 10 to 15 mg per kg per day and is available as 200 mg and 500 mg tablets 200 mg per 5 ml syrup and 100 mg per ml infusion 
The alternate next line reserve drug is levetiracetam, which is given as 10 mg per kg per day. It can be increased to 10 mg per kg every 2 weeks up to 60 mg per kg per day and is available as 250, 500, 750 and 1000 mg tablets and 100 mg per ml syrup. On that note, I come to the end of this short presentation on the basic drugs which we use in pediatric practice. And there are two points which I would like to specifically highlight before concluding the presentation. Number one, the source of all these dosages is in Mehrban Singh's drug dosage book. And I strongly recommend for cross-reference that everyone does keep this with them in their pocket as a reference, number one. And number two, another extension to the disclaimer which I put up in the beginning is that this is generally targeted at medical practitioners, this video. This video is targeted specifically towards medical practitioners, more so towards those who are working in the field of pediatrics, all the more towards new pediatric PTs who are just joining into the workforce, as well as for a revision towards anybody who is exam going or towards any interns or towards undergraduate students. But this video is not targeted towards any parents or towards the general public. So please refrain from doing self-medication and going over the counter because a pediatrician knows what is best for your child. This video is purely meant with an educational uh, perspective and I hope that it is taken in that sense. On that note, I thank you all for patiently listening to the video and hope you tune in to the next one as well. Thank you.